Hello there, a uh, very good evening and welcome to Let's Talk Politics. I'm your host, Eddie Lane, and of course, first I want to apologize uh, for the late start. Uh, we experienced some technical difficulties and that would have um, delayed us uh, by a few minutes. Nonetheless, uh, you're going to get your maximum time. We're going to be here with you for an entire hour. Um, so we are going to make up back that time that you missed there. I have with me this evening, we have a number of issues to, to discuss. Um, it, that, you know, current issues in the political divide and the big issue of the continuous uh, uncovering of hundreds of millions, billions of dollars of taxpayers' money being wasted, uh, that were wasted rather by the AP and new AFC uh, during their time in office um, on drugs and medical supplies. We're going to talk about that a little, but this evening I have with me uh, the Honorable Bishop Juan Ejo, the Minister of Public Works. And I have with me Dr. Peter Ramsaru, the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Office for Investment. Uh, Bishop Peter, good evening and welcome to the program. A very good evening, Eddie, and my colleague Peter. To all your listeners and viewers, greetings. We look forward for a great program this evening. Uh, certainly. Um, I want to start, though, Bishop, I want to start uh, to discuss a couple of misinformation. Uh, well, there's a massive mis misinformation campaign that is ongoing uh, with or by the AP and new AFC. And I keep making the point repeatedly, this gang, the problem with this gang is that they failed miserably in office. They failed in their bid and their attempt to steal the elections. They are failing in properly representing the people who voted for them whether in parliament or outside of parliament. They haven't done anything of significance in parliament, apart from hitting tables and walking out and claim that laptops uh, are stolen and claim that, 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 that people hit them. You know, so nothing constructive. So what do they do? They resort to their usual tricks and tactics. One, to spread their lies and their misinformation and to race bait. Uh, the oldest trick in the PNC books, race bait. So we had this fellow who is calling himself the leader of the opposition, Harman, doing a walkabout at the markets and telling vendors and stallholders and, and business people about the PVP distributed some $25 million um, to, to grant to, to um, large businesses as COVID relief. Um, you know, I don't know where to start with this, Bishop. I honestly don't know where to start with this. The lies that comes out of this guy's mouth and all of them and with the straight face with which they do it well eddie telling a lie seems to become natural normal and routine for elements within the apnu afc it's disgusting it's worrying it's so normal now for leaders of the PNC-led AP and UAFC to lie, to spread misinformation and deceive people or attempt to deceive people that it is now worrying what is the future of this group, this cabal, this gang of journeymen. The instance that you refer to, the leader of the opposition going into the market and telling people that the PVPC distributed $25 million to 50 or so businessmen. It is one thing to just say things carelessly, but these are things that could be easily verified. There is something called a national budget. There is an appropriations bill that turns an appropriations act that can be scrutinized and examined. Where did the money come from? Something that never happened. And the person who is considered the leader of the political opposition or the most senior leader 
the, the face, the representative, the voice of the main opposition in Guyana chooses as a weapon to attack a legitimately elected government lies and misinformation. And he's spreading that in the marketplace where re really people are so gullible, they will not fact check, they will not ask questions, but then they will start to spin this narrative. Since he was confronted by leaders of the PPPC, debunking that, he has not had the decency to apologize. He did not have the decency to say, I erred. He did not have the decency to even say, I was misinformed by those who by, put the blame somewhere. They just would like to leave that on the record as if it is the truth when it is a blatant lie. That speaks to the hopelessness in this group ever again providing leadership to Guyana. They lied to the people of Guyana throughout 2019 after the passage of the no confidence vote they lied to the people of guyana in the run-up to the 2020 elections they lied to the people of guyana after march 2nd when they fully well knew they lost the elections spending huge sums tens of millions of taxpayers dollars in legal fees to pay high-priced lawyers to perpetuate a fallacy to feather their own nests and to create a perception as if what they're saying is the truth, when really it could be fact checked and it could be deciphered and everyone could see it's a blatant lie. The, in, in Christianity, there's a word that we use regularly. It's called repentance. And it means to change your mind to recognize your wrong and turn away from it. There is no sign of repentance. These are unrepentant, hopeless, self-serving, deceitful leaders whose only interests are theirs and they don't concern how they damage the psyche, how they interfere with the future of Guyana their only concern is about looking good for a moment, even though they could be destroyed in seconds after uttering such foolishness. So the misinformation campaign by the APNU AFC, whether it as it relates to COVID grant, the pink slips, the misinformation campaign, because they have even used that misinformation campaign to harm their own supporters, because there's that whisper campaign that is going on about the vaccination and the things that will happen to you if you are vaccinated. While many of them, if not all of them, rushed to parliament buildings early, got their shots, and they're sitting quietly in a corner but are spreading misinformation and lies. They are harming young people. They are harming their own supporters. They are harming their own future. And they're really putting Guyana in harm's way. And I don't know when this will come to an end. There should be a great call for massive, large-scale repentance in the PNC-led APNU AFC. You've got to stop this pattern of lying. You have to stop this, this, this whole element of deceit. Your slip is showing. The nation is seeing through you. And you're continuing to sit there on Facebook, on television, writing letters, spinning narratives, People are fed up and tired. They are sick of seeing this month, this, these, these monsters that I have to describe, this action, this behavior, this monster that is being fed, that could really bring chaos in this country by the dangers of the lies that are being uttered. It must be rebuked and it must be debunked in the strongest possible terms. And Eddie, this is just one way in which we could do that but we have to get the masses of the people to understand we have to reject this it cannot continue i think you're muted eddie 
thanks, thanks, Bishop. Peter, I'll bring you in here, but what I have to say to you is that we, I may have to run and leave you to, to wrap this thing up. I, I just received a call. Uh, uh, Judy has called. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll stay with you for the next 15 minutes, and then I'll, I'll take a run, Peter, and you and Bishop are going to, to, to juggle this through for me. Um, like I said, Judy has called. So, but Peter, I want to bring you in here with what is happening with the PNC. We've seen the lies ever so often. Well, I think the bishop uh, really outlined what is happening. What What is really happening to Harmon is because they're not doing any substantive work as the opposition, they're struggling to make the news. So they're finding um, areas where it becomes controversial, whether it's a, a statement by the MP or by uh, Mr. Harmon. You know, it's a fight for recognition. They're lost in the wilderness. They have not uh, given their supporters any hope. They are afraid to tell people they have lost the election. Uh, they're still using strange terminology. I saw today that uh, the former president, uh, Mr. David Granger, is going to sue or is suing for $2 billion. You know what? I can't wait to see Mr. Granger on the witness stand because he's going to have to answer some tough questions of what went on during that period. So it's a good thing he's, he's filed a lawsuit. I think it gives the, the country a chance and the lawyers a chance to put him on the stand and ask him questions of why he believed um, somebody said something against him. So I, I believe the PNC is just uh, dying for some form of coverage and, and uh, they will continue to pass misinformation. But one of the good things that are happening outside of that is that less and less of their supporters are listening to them. Their supporters are working alongside, uh, looking for, you know, the, the house lots and the houses that our president has uh, outlined in his, his, his housing initiative. Many are working, that they are seeing the construction boom. So they don't have time to listen to Mr. Harmon lies. So he's going to have to come up with something better to get news uh, coverage. Uh, that's not going to get the news coverage continued uh, going forward. Make a point here. This afternoon, I just actually came back from the North Rongveld Multilateral School, where we took the Goal Ghana Online Academy of Learning 20,000 scholarship program. We had a fantastic turnout and attendance. But listen how dangerous these people are. An activist of the APNU AFC positioned herself at the gate, talking to people while they're coming in. You know, you can't go in because you don't have everything. Turn away. Uh, the place is full. You can't go in. People are coming to get help, to benefit from what has been offered by the state. And the opposition activists is at the gate, turning residents of South Georgetown away, denying them of an opportunity to go and apply for their online scholarship. You know what they want? They want to be able to say, you see, the government give out scholarship and they leave out South Georgetown. But that's why we went to South Georgetown, using the principles of affirmative action to ensure equal opportunity and equal access. But there again, deceiving and turning their people away. The vaccination campaign, the government has expended monies to ensure every Guyanese 18 years and over can get a vaccine against uh, COVID-19. The whisper campaigns on the ground. In a community like Linden, where they have large support, only 8% of the population have accepted the vaccine. When the average across the rest of the country is in the 30s, only 8%. Ministers went out to Linden to talk to the people, and you should hear what they are saying. It is lack of leadership and this same culture of lies and deception and misinformation that have confused the minds of Lindeners, and they are running away from the vaccine rather than getting it. And we have to be bullish and bold enough to tell them, what do you want, the ventilator or the vaccine? And you have to bring them to a place of uh, 
waking up and realizing what is going on. So the lies that they're telling, they're going to rob their people from educational opportunities because of the lies and the misinformation. By putting their activists to turn people away from the school, they're going to rob their people of health possibilities and health opportunities by spreading misinformation. They're robbing their people from a future of getting engaged in Guyana because of their spreading of misinformation and their, their, their racism. We have real problems and we have to be able to address that. It's not good for Guyana and people got to start calling them out and rejecting them. And Bishop, that's the thing. The thing is, these guys do this. They do this as though, it, it, you know, it's okay for them to lie, for them to spread misinformation. Um, you know, that campaign has been running. Harmon is leading. Um, I see Granger's back in the fold, by the way, uh, suing people. I saw someone saying that maybe, maybe the people of this country should sue him for what we went through for those five months. But... The campaign is twofold, like I said, and, and there is this racist campaign. I'm going to leave you guys at this point, but I want to introduce this video. Um, I see uh, the seer now playing the victim. This the woman who blatantly disparaged a section of the population of this country. Now becomes the victim, as though people are lying to her, are lying on her, and people are trying to smear her so she has this massive campaign going i stand with um amanda walton this year if you stand with her you are a racist too because you're standing with a racist you're defending a racist you're no different and that is the problem we have so she's now playing the victim but i want to play this video and this is where i'll i'll leave uh peter and um and and, and bishop because like i said judy call um, and you guys are going to, to carry on and rap for me. But I'm going to play this video. When you come back, Peter, you and Bishop can, can have this conversation. And so, unfortunately, that part of the political divide on the PPPC have a base who prefer if they say that this is what is going to happen. These people, are going to, the men going to come and rape your daughter, kill your children. They believe that because the burden of sorting things out for themselves is too great and so they remain trapped all the while believing that they are free to think and to yeah. self-determine they do not have the right they do not have the freedom of self-determination because freedom requires responsibility freedom true freedom requires work it requires investment it is okay for me to remain in bondage because then somebody is responsible for me. But the minute you take the road of self-determination and you assume that responsibility onto yourself, it requires work. So we have a, a bunch of mentally lazy people. And so the PPP understands this very, very well. Very, very well. And they capitalize on it. Contrast the supporters of the of the of the of the uh, PNC, for example, who are far more inquisitive and inquiring, and who have a greater appreciation of the democratic process. Well, Bishop, I think you mentally. You are, you are Well, Peter, the only, thing, the only thing that I can say is that we should discover who was mentally lazy to decipher for themselves that 33 is the majority of 65. We could decipher who was mentally lazy to put out their statements of poll in public for all to see so that their supporters and the world could add and determine who won the March 2nd, 2020 elections. They, the people of Guyana could decipher who's mentally lazy, that our arguments in the parliament are articulate versus bullyism, vulgarity, and demonizing of people. You know, when I listen to people like Amanda Desir, the most I could do is make it into a big joke. 
because these are people who pride themselves of how qualified they are and and pride themselves about how intellectual they are but here there again sitting in the public space expressing a view and practicing rank racism that is what it is rank racism uh, apart from being intellectually bankrupt and lacking in ideas the utterances that came there is what is called rank racism peter i chaired the ethnic relations commission 2003 to 2011 and amanza walton desir and the general secretary of the party that she represented would have been sitting before the ethnic relations commission to answer questions but when you have a toothless poodle that has been controlled by the political masters, people like Amanda Desir could utter such rank racism and then put a spin. And look who, where the spin has gone to. A commissioner of the Ethnic Relations Commission who's used a term and it as saying marked, and it has now become as if she has been uh, uh, celebrated as this great person. Who wants to be silenced because of what she says it is laughable it is laughable in Guyana we must be careful about how we speak especially in a politically sensitive environment like like the one we live in and you know this group of people that are so desperate and that is what it is Peter we you know we've been talking about this for years, the desperation of the APNU AFC. When they got into government, they knew that it was a one-term government because they got there and they didn't know how they get there. So it was a grab for all you got and their desperation took them down different alleys, took them down various uh, streets and caused them to do different things, benefiting themselves. When they realized that they lost the confidence of the people by way of that no confidence motion the pressure of them realizing they only had 90 days to remain in office based upon the constitution they started doing more desperate things when they lost the march 2nd 2020 20 elections the desperation became more intense now that they're in opposition and nobody's listening to them or taking them on their desperation have become more intense but that desperation is going to harm their own people because somewhere along the line people look to them for leadership somewhere along the line people listen to what they're saying and this kind of rank racism must not be allowed it must be condemned in every form so you know just listening to her again there with that video clip make you want to vomit it's it's upsetting to your intellectual equilibrium, it puts you out of balance. Sorry to have to be so confusing in my in, in, in my denouncing of such behavior. But Peter, it's over to you. Well, you know, if 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 what I see this, you, you use the term laughable. The fact that, you know, we had five years of of them demonstrating incompetence, you know, they if you listen to somebody like her speak right now or you listen to Mr. Harmon speak, you realize that the five years that they sat in office didn't achieve anything. You know, there was zero investment uh, during that five years. They, we are finding out more and more of how they wasted uh, our taxpayers' money. So the less and less people will listen to them, and, and, and you use the term desperation, I think she has figured out some way to make media and uh, uh, is living in the limelight uh, for a little while. But, you know, let's focus though, uh, Bishop, I think what we're finding as we travel around uh, across the country, you know, with the 20,000 scholarships that uh, our president has offered to our Guyanese, we're finding a, a, a different climate out there. The, uh, the supporters of the PNC who knew I think today now they know they've lost the election. They know that, you know, it was uh, uh, the SOPs that wasn't shared. 
uh, the recount all proved that they lost the election. So they're trying to get on back with their lives. There are a lot of folks as I travel around Guyana is excited about our president's vision, is excited about some of the programs. I saw, Bishop, some of the programs out of your office today about the upgrades of the Pakwani Road and, and uh, the 2,000 miles vision our president have on opening up our infrastructure. So more and more, I think Harmon and the rest of them are seeing the PPP delivering on their commitments of the campaign. And every day they, the PPP government delivers makes them very upset. You know, he had another MP um, using the term scholarship, 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 like she's gone crazy. You know, they, they can't take the fact that the cabinet, the president is delivering what he said he will deliver during the campaign. Well, Peter, nine months. It's been a very exciting nine months for Diana. And one thing is sure, the traditional hardcore PNCites are so ashamed of their leaders that they prefer to stay away, be silent. And only those who cannot help themselves are, which is a, a, a sprinkling, are following. Number one, they have recognized that when their leaders were in office, they filled their own pockets. They benefit themselves. They use them as pawns in their political game. They lost an election and they deceived them and they were running them up to the gallows. The government has changed. And the people are saying, but they told us the PPP were demons. They told us the PPP was the devil and evil. Look, the PPP are in our communities. The PPP is bringing to our children, our senior citizens, the PPP is working with our young people. The PPP is bettering our lives. Our community grounds are being fixed. Our roads are being fixed. We're getting house lots. We're getting jobs. The, the PPP is creating opportunities for studies and scholarship. They're listening to our concerns. They're bettering the lives of people across the country. So what is happening? They can't stop the tide from coming in. So they're trying to distract, distort, and obfuscate. Could you imagine when I saw today that former President Granger is suing Kit Nascimento for things that he said <laughs> over a period of time? No, the CCJ said you broke the Constitution. When you appointed James Patterson as chairman of GCOM, you acted unconstitutionally. Save Kit Nascimento right and say you were you acted unconstitutional. You were, your actions were illegal. It was arbitrary. It was contrary. It was against the letters written of the Constitution. You're so demand for that. As a president, you were the first person that sat and held executive office that a court had to rule that your actions were unconstitutional repeatedly. When you got your minister of state to halt promotions in the police force, the court ruled it was unconstitutional. You got your minister, Simona Brooms, to write to the Public Service Commission to halt promotions in the public service. The court had to rule that was unconstitutional. And you're trying to put yourself out as if you are this person who have broken no law, did everything right. You fully well knew you lost the election. And for five months, you make fancy speeches while your surrogates and your activists and everybody else was spewing hate and creating confusion and misinformation, speaking like a statement, a statement which showed us up at a podium and in your boardroom and with your, with your lieutenants, letting loose the, the, the dogs of war in the courts and in the streets and confusing things in the media, held Diana Ransom for five months, and then you want to sue a man and a newspapers because he expressed a view. Peter, where are we going? And like you said earlier, I but want him in the witness box. I want him in the witness box. No, I, think, I think, yeah, that's it. I, I, I can't wait for 
the lawyers to put Mr. Granger in the witness box, but we're gonna ask him the same question. Did you see the SOPs? Did you, you know, why didn't you follow the Constitution? <laughs> the first question, did you take enough time to get your grandchild with a calculator to add up the 1900 numbers from the various SOPs to see if you won or you lost? And if you didn't, why? And if you did, what was the answer you got? Then you could come back and sue. It's a shame. So we got to think to look forward to. <laughs> we finally see Mr. Granger come out abiding and uh, going to have to take on a good public life uh, in the courts. Yeah, yeah. This is shameless. And, and it, it shows their desperation. Fighting for survival. Fighting for recognition. It looks like they're having a serious um, problem with uh, attention. They have to get attention. They're having an attention deficit. So the fact that they're having a, a, an attention deficit, they have to create these scenarios to get some attention to themselves. Uh, I mean, I, I really don't understand this end game. Guyana is not going to sit and wait on the dotishness that is playing out. Sorry that I have to use such a strong term. Guyana is not going to sit and wait on the dotishness. Guyana's future is at stake. We got to transform this country. We got to build this country. We got to embrace each other as brothers and sisters. We got to build Guyana village by village, community by community. We got to work with our young people. We got to safeguard our women from violence that are, that, that are coming against them from their lovers and their men. We got to work with our children in a COVID environment to ensure that they don't go backwards in their education, but that they remain constant and even leapfrog the next levels. We got to open up opportunities to our young men. We got to ensure that our jails are not populated, but rather our schools, our colleges, our universities, our factories are populated with people working. We got to deal with the issues of crime. Ghana is not going to sit here and wait and wallow in dotishness. So those who would like to keep that narrative going, they're wasting people's time. They're wasting people's time. And, you know, Bishop, you talked uh, a lot about the, the wasting of time. But I, I, I really find, though, uh, that when you're out there and to know that 20,000 more people will be able to get a higher level of education, right, as we prepare for what Guyana is transforming itself into, led by our, our president, Dr. Ali, you know, he has actually renewed the dream of many of our, our of our people. When I say renew the dream, you know, to, to the dream of owning your own home and your own land, to see the massive housing program on the way, that's renewing that dream. And, and he continues to modernize our known industries. You see what we've done uh, with the sugar industry revitalization. Um, looking at, you know, bringing rice back to the market at, at a very decent cost. So the modernization of our known industries is happening around us. Why is the transformation on many new things? You know, when I sit in my office and I see the investors coming in, both local and foreign, to see what they're uh, looking to do. Uh, we had one group that came in, uh, wanted to plant 75,000 acres of corn and soya beans. You know, what would that do? We're going to be making our own oil going forward, the, the, the stock feed for the poultry. So the president has put an integrated vision together. And you read the first 2020 budget and you saw what 2021 budget has outlined. So Guyana is transforming. The fact that we have been able to vaccinate over 150,000 plus people as of date. And as you said, a lot of those supporters of the PNC that is getting bad news and are not taking the vaccine needs to, you know, not listen to those folks. You do need the vaccine. Um, it's it's a pandemic that we want to control. We have done fairly well in Guyana in managing the economics. Our president has given out the first COVID grant. It's, you know, they're looking at other ways. Businesses are recovering. So people need to look at where they fit. What you when you read and listen to what is happening to Guyana, you know you have a choice of listening to harm and lies, or you have a choice of listening to how do I as a citizen become part of this growth Guyana is going through. If I'm into construction, I need to be looking how to 
get into one of these big opportunities. If, if you're in agriculture, if you're expanding in agriculture, you're working along both local and foreign investors, now is the time to make sure you don't get left behind. So don't let those incompetent leadership of Abdul, PNC, and AFC lead you down a path where you look around two years from now and go, how come others have done this? You have that same opportunity. Sign up for those scholarships. Sign up for your 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 program for, for housing. Look at the, the opportunities in the hospitality. In the budget, I think we talk about building a hospitality school. Those are all new areas that young people and, and mothers and, and single parents can have an opportunity for new jobs. The president has outlined 50,000 new job opportunities in the next five years. We are on our way. Our growth this year is going to be close to 16 plus percent in our GDP. That means we are going to benefit. Each of us is going to have a chance to benefit. Do not get left behind by listening to false information out here. Well, Peter, I, I, I thank you for putting that in because I think we prefer to spend our time talking about the future, what we're doing now that will help us in the future, Ghana's transformation and modernization as against this group that want to keep us locked in a race baiting environment and to create this imagery that Ghana is locked in race politics. What we have is a group of people who are very selfish, whose only interest is self-interest, who have historically and repeatedly used the African cause or the African Guyanese cause for their own benefit. They have now been exposed because a significant number of afro guyanese and people of African ancestry have decided that they will no longer be let down that road of a zero-sum game, a, a road where there is no logical conclusion, a road where there is no light at the end of the tunnel for empowerment, self-determination, and development. But they will make a conscious decision and get on a program of development. And that program of development is in the center. Make use of opportunities, opportunities for education, opportunities to become owners of your own property, opportunities to open your own business and to get into the program for small business development. Opportunities to diversify from traditional sectors into new and emergent sectors, agro-processing, information, communication, technology, and now oil and gas. When you see our young men and not so young men too, talking about in being engaged with Exxon Mobil or a contractor that is engaged with Exxon Mobil, they feel a sense of pride. We are in the big league now. We are out there. It's how men behave when they worked in the bauxite belt because it brought them great income. And then when we had OMI, over almost a thousand people were employed at OMI. People who went to OMI prided themselves, I'm an OMI employee. Then we had Troy Resources, and people says, I got a gig with Troy. Now, people are feeling a sense of pride that they could do better for themselves and their families. And then the facts, people could now become small contractors. The amount of small individuals who have gone and registered their own businesses and get their compliance and seeking to be pre-qualified and they're bidding and filling up tender documents and submitting to get an opportunity to be engaged to 
they are they are they are, they are elevating and liberating themselves from mental slavery. They're not running down Regent Street to block up anybody's business. They're not in the business of looting and burning and beating up people because of how they look or how their hair is blowing in the wind or if it is kinky. They're not getting involved in that. That era of politics is gone. People have rejected that. And the people who are leading the PNC, they're not recognizing it, the Harmons and the Sherrod Duncans and the Bonds and all those who are on Facebook and writing foolishness when they dig. They don't realize that people are detesting that. People have a developmental mode. Guyana is not going to remain a paria state, backward, hopeless, dark, illiterate, ignorant. We have been set free. And people are walking in that freedom. Those chains of oppression and feeling that we are inferior and we are not adequate have long disappeared. That is why we could have an aggressive local content policy that says we're not going to be tenants in our own yard. We're not going to be left out. You got to treat us with dignity and respect in our country. We welcome the international investment. We welcome the foreign direct investment. We welcome all the companies. But our people got to be engaged, not as cleaners and handymen and gardeners and drivers and security. But they're going to be CEOs. That's why we're educating them. That's why we're giving them scholarships. They're going to be the engineers. They're going to be the, the ship superintendents. Yes, Guyanese is going to be doing that. And it's not going to happen with every day somebody cuts somebody in the letter columns and then another one go on Facebook for an hour and do a live and cuss the other one. And it's making no sense. It's like one lady meet me up. She says, Bishop, what the hell? She was just upset. What the hell? What is really going on in Guyana? What the hell? You mean you're not going to be ashamed to go out there and say things that you know could be could be fact-checked and you're just lying your way through? You're gonna, you hope to thrive in that environment? The progressive forces are moving ahead. And Guyana strands, you know what we're talking about? The new bridge over the Demerara River. We're talking now about connecting a four-lane highway coming from Diamond to the four-lane highway, highway at Sheriff Mandela. We just moved in a matter of days, moving Hunter Street from a two-lane to a three-lane road to deal with traffic congestion. We're talking here about children, even in a COVID-19 environment, preparing themselves to do well in Guyana, topping the Caribbean in such an environment. We're not going to be left behind. We're not going to be left behind. Go to the Ministry of Housing every morning. The people are out there checking on their status, their application, their building. They want to get their houses moving. People want to be able to marry, get their own home, get their own car, get a good job, get home every afternoon. People want a piece of land so they could get their own flower gardens. Romance must be again, flowers must bloom. People don't want every day is a dreary cuss up, cuss down. Tell lie, tell lie, tell lie. People want to hear Ghana is moving forward. And the PVPC is offering that kind of a leadership. I, I agree there, Bishop. Uh, you know, the president started his campaign uh, prior to the election about, you know, a one Guyana, the creation of wealth for all Guyanese. He, he's the president for all regions, for all people. And as you know, we watch the cabinet go out there and, and perform the duties. Uh, it's every region, you know, the scholarships. Uh, I know you were in Linden recently in Region 10. There are folks in Region 1 all across Guyana. The opportunity is there. The president has instilled back a sense of pride, a duty of hope in our nation uh, where that we can feel and be part of of the growth you know when you listen to some of the pundits so bishop you know complain about us bringing the gas to shore for example you know we pay 53 plus dollars uh, for kilowatt imagine bringing my my personal electric bill down in less than half i will be totally happy if you know if 
the, if the government had asked each individual to say, if your electric bill is $50,000 and in three years, I, you will only pay 25000 and, you know, give me 25000 to pay the bill, I would give it in a heartbeat, right? So for those that are saying that the gas to shore pipeline is a white elephant, you know, the, actually, uh, Mr. Patterson, I think, said that, the MP, that's a white elephant. Actually, white elephants are very rare. So if and they're very, very valuable. So the gas to shore pipeline is a very valuable project. It not just reduces just our energy, it, it will create the ability for manufacturing, large, large uh, investment in agro-processing. And that's why we're seeing a lot of you now with potential glass factory. Let's do our own milk factory. You know, why do we import 35 million US dollars for the milk every year? Why not do it right here? As energy cost comes down, these are the type of businesses we are now looking forward to. So the, the farmers alone is not just going to plant the cherry trees. You saw DDL has expanded their operation to go from the small boxes of juice to the large boxes of juice, juices. That means we got to grow more fruits in order to supply uh, DDL. You, you know, I had an investor today that came in and, and we're talking about potentially uh, a canning factory. Uh, there are prefab uh, uh, companies coming in to build prefab concrete slabs. These are all require cheaper energy and with the, with the president's vision and the cabinet vision of, of an integrated energy solution with hydro, with solar, with fossil fuel, with, with, with gas and other renewables, that is where Guyana, we're skating to where the puck is going to be, not where the puck is today. So again, my challenge to those listening to the incompetency of opposition, then let you stay behind, be part of that uh, president's vision of renewing the dream and, and creating that sense of pride and hope in our nation. Um, you know, the, the bishop talked about the ICT arena. There's so much growth in technology. What COVID-19 has taught us that we've got to be much more efficient in terms of a lot of us learn to use things we didn't know how to use, computers, video conferencing, having meetings. It's a lot of, lot of um, opportunities that came about. We now got to take that opportunity to the next level. So I, I believe, though, that uh, Bishop, that maybe we do need the comedy once in a while because you know we're out there seeing things happen and maybe we need to have a laugh but not to the expense of of their supporters we will work at their supporters to ensure that their supporters have every single opportunity uh to participate in the growth of Guyana, and they're doing it and i think the president has outlined that national vision and i'm i'm happy just to see it work because i can see the results happening in nine months bishop what the president and in his cabinet, including you, have done for our nation, I think we we can expect a lot more uh, in the next four, four years come up. So if, if the opposition feels that that's their solution for winning the next election, I wish them luck because that is, that is a, a good recipe to let the, the world and Guyanese know that they are not competent enough to uh, lead this country ever again ever again you know peter last year this time probably this time last year this day we were going home from the recount votes were being recounted at the Otto chung international conference center where COVID was even being used as a weapon to prevent it from happening but you know a lot of the activists of the pnc who sat in those recount stations, some of them were abusive, downright abusive, seeking to bully some of our comrades from the PPPC. Where are they today? And I recall having to stand up to some of them and I told them, I said, you know, this is gonna be over. And what are you gonna do with your lives? Are you not ashamed of the way you're behaving? Don't you have the capacity to see where this is leading you? You don't hear about them anymore. They have disappeared. They have gone. They have gone. Disappeared. You know why? They were misled. And these were supposedly leaders 
of the PNC. I hope their supporters, people who took the time to go and vote, those who wave their flags, those who pledged their support and insulted people in the streets and teased and taunted those who dare to stand up and be different. I hope they have come to realize you've been misled. You got people who are prepared, even in this ninth hour, to continue to tell you lies and spread misinformation. It's time that you get up. Go and engage the Ministry of Agriculture of how you could get some land to plant soya beans and corn because there's a whole incentive package there to promote that kind of a development. I would hope some of those people would get up and go down to the Ministry of Human Services and Social Security and engage Minister Vindia Prasad. I'm a single mother. How could you help me? Can I get into the Ghana Women's Leadership Institute? Could I get some training? I would hope some of these people would get up and go down and meet Minister Waldron at her office and talk about how they could benefit from the small business development program that the government is pushing. I would hope that some of these people would get up and go and register a business and start seeking to become a small contractor and to pre-qualify themselves and engage rather than sitting there waiting on what they call the PNC Messiah. The PNC didn't, didn't deliver you and was not your Messiah for 28 years. They humbled and sought to stymie your progress while the PPPC was in office from 1992. They came in in 2015 telling you that they will be the Messiah. And they have not brought you out of your darkness. As a matter of fact, they have set you up for a high fall. It's time that you start accessing. Get, get in the program. Get in the program of development. Look at what is happening with Georgetown and City Hall. I went to East Rongfeld on Tuesday of this week. The drains are clogged up. The alleyways are filled with grass. The people are unhappy. They're asking the government to intervene. And yet there's someone in the crowd saying, how come you come here without City Hall? We, we, we have that thinking. I've been to Baggersville and Denamstel and Strodeville and Nimes, walking the streets and talking to the people and engaging them. I went into Mara. And you know what one man at the back of Mara told me? He said, he said, 50% of the headache done. Somebody come. He said, for the last five years, we didn't see a minister. Not one. At least somebody come and talk to us. I told them what we're going to do. They sent me pictures with all the difficulties that they're having there. They're helping themselves to fix their road with shovel and spade. Of course, we're going to do some work at the back there for Mara because their suffering is immense. But what I'm trying to tell you, the spirit of community needs to be revived. People need to organize themselves into community development groups. People need to organize themselves for the development of the community. And Peter, we're on here tonight. Let's talk politics. Guyana is going to celebrate our 55th anniversary in independence in a matter of three weeks. Maybe as a country, we can do something to pull our country together, pull our, pull our people back together to embrace each other. Maybe every group in every community could do something to beautify Guyana. Maybe every religious group, the churches, the mandirs, the, the mosques, can do something in their communities to help to improve life in their communities. Let the Guyanese spirit come alive again. And let us break down those walls of divisions. And when we break down those walls of divisions, let's take the materials and make bridges that we could reach across to each other. Let's hold hands and do it together. 
all of Guyana must rise when the when the tide comes in. And that is what the PPPC and President Irfan Ali wants. All the boats must rise because the, the tide of prosperity is coming in. The tide of transformation and organization and development and greatness is coming in. We want everybody to be involved. And that invitation is there. Today we were in BP. We are not just going where it's comfortable. We are going where it is necessary. I know where it's necessary, wherever people live. Our developmental program is not being governed by the ballot box. It is being governed by where people live. In all 215 Amerindian villages, in every region, down the rivers, in every creek head, on the East Coast, in the East Bank, in New Amsterdam, in Bartica, in the Deep Rupununi, everywhere our development is coming. And that's the only thing we know to do, serve people and develop Guyana. So we will continue to do what we have to do in the face of the lies and the misinformation and the troublemakers. So we will continue to do what we have to do. So Peter, that's where we are, and, and we just got to get it out. Bishop, I, I, I think we're going to close off here, uh, make a, one comment and leave you for the last word. But, you know, we have a, a, a young and bold president that has outlined a vision for our nation, has put together a powerful budget for 2021. He has, as I mentioned earlier, brought back a sense of pride into our, the nation, a sense of hope, duty. He has renewed the dream of many of us. He is putting innovation in his plans in terms of new new technologies and you know the liberalization of the Telecommunication Act, the the gas to shore pipeline, the the whole hotel tourism industry, eco tourism. He is modernizing our known infrastructure. He has created a culture of excellence in our education system, even during the COVID nineteen. How do we? Um, you know, make sure our people continue to, to be trained, to be able to develop themselves, prepare ourselves for this massive transformation. He has put together the, an outstanding infrastructure upgrade to our nation, opening up massive new lands for agriculture. There are going to be so many other areas where, as a citizen, I'm able now to participate. So I'm excited. I, I um, realize that when, when we say all of us should come together, um, you know, the 55, 55th anniversary of independence. I think our president has outlined that vision. This is the one Guyana. He's implementing it. We will all shake hands together and make this thing happen. So I look forward to the next few years seeing uh, all of Guyana. And, you know, the president, he always ends where he says, you know, the creation of wealth for Guyana, for all Guyanese. This is not about foreign investment. This is about investment that makes our people lives better. So when your electricity costs can come down, when you've got the zero uh, rated uh, items, you've got incentives for agriculture, incentives for tourism. You know, I, I just met with the tourism uh, industry today talking about incentives for building eco lodges out there. You know, what incentives we government will participate in. There are many, many opportunities. So I'm excited, Bishop. I'm glad where you sit, you can see that development, um, you know, let's leave Granger and and, um, and Harmon to the comedian uh, role for now. They're um, not giving the supporters any um, good advice. And I think the best advice that you have given tonight is for all of us to get on board. Don't be left behind. Participate in the programs and, and, and see your benefit um, that you deserve. We as guys deserve to finally get a chance to experience the wealth we all talked about for decades. We finally got a chance to be able to get cheaper gas into our country. We finally got a chance to see democracy work right. We finally got a chance to see the Western world supporting uh, democracy in our country. We're all this going back in the past. Last year was a terrible year for um, for Guyana and what those folks have done to us. But let's never forget that they can never go back in power. 
folks had to, to join in the, the economic program of our president, be part of that development, Bishop, and, and I think we're going to have that, Diana, we all dream of. It's here. We just have to make form the arrangements of its arrival. Economics will change us and working with each other and not playing the, polit the race politics of the PNC, we're going to be way ahead of, of the game going forward. And I'm excited to be part, and I'll close with that. Yes, Peter, and my yes. final word, Vito, encourage all Guyanese to go and get vaccinated. COVID is real. It's been having its toll. We've passed 300 deaths in Guyana. We don't want another person to die. Your government, the Caring Infernali administration, has expended a huge amount of resources to ensure that we have vaccines for every Guyanese 18 years and over. Please get up tomorrow and go and get vaccinated. We need to achieve herd immunity so that our people in Ghana can be saved. Be wise and be vaccinated. Thank you, and it's such an, a, a pleasure to always share and to talk politics and to just discuss with the people of Guyana and ensure that we get the views out. So I'm so happy that we were able to do this. Good night to all, to all of our viewers and our listeners.